Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All the praises due to Allah, and we ask Allah to send His peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. Now, today we're going to launch into a really special topic the miracle of the Quran, the linguistic miracle of the Quran. You see, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told us that every single messenger was sent with a convincing miracle. A miracle, when the people saw it and when they observed it, they knew in their hearts, even if they did not profess it with their tongues, they knew in their heart that this was the truth, that this man truly was a prophet of God. So for example, Moses was given the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. And when Pharaoh saw it, and when the army of Pharaoh was crushed, he knew that Pharaoh was what he claimed to be. Now I believe, he said, in the God of Moses, the Bani Israel, the children of Israel. Jesus, he healed the sick. He cured the lepers. He gave sight to the blind. Even the dead were raised by the permission of God. These were the convincing miracles that were given to the prophets who came before. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, said, I have been given the Qur'an. I have been given the Qur'an. That is the convincing miracle of the Prophet. And he said, I hope that because of it, more people will enter my religion than any other Prophet. So today, we're going to be discussing the miracle of the Qur'an. This is it. I'm holding in my hand here a miracle. Some of you may say, well, how is it a miracle? If you watched the previous series, you would have got an inkling into how the Qur'an, in terms of its preservation, is truly an amazing thing. But something being amazing doesn't mean it's a miracle. So what do we mean by a miracle exactly? Well, a miracle is something that cannot normally be achieved by natural processes. And a miracle is something quite different from magic. Because, for example, there are things that magicians can do. Like, for example, when Moses went to Pharaoh and the sign that God gave to Moses was his staff. When he threw the staff, it became like a snake. And Pharaoh said, well... I have magicians who can do the same thing. So he called his magicians and he organized a competition between the magicians and Moses. And so the magicians, they managed through their magic to deceive people into thinking that their staves were snakes. So they threw down their staves and they did. They deceived the people into believing that these staves were snakes and it seems as if they were moving. But then... When Moses threw down his staff, it demolished the magic. And the magicians themselves realized that what had taken place was beyond what any magician could accomplish. These magicians were experts. Magic in Egypt at the time had reached a type of an art form. It had reached its peak. And they were in every stratum of society involved with aspects of magic. Even the Egyptian Book of the Dead is a type of magical incantation that is supposed to bring the dead pharaohs and the dead people back to life. But these magicians were astounded. They knew that this was beyond their art. This was beyond their craft. This was beyond their capabilities. What Moses had was from God, and they knew it. For them, it was a convincing miracle. Similarly, in the time of Jesus, the people were very skilled at the time in medicine, and the Jews were very proud of their abilities in the field of medicine. But yet, when Jesus came, giving sight to the blind and curing lepers, even the dead were brought back to life. They knew that this was beyond what any human being could do. This was something that was from God. So how can a book 
the Quran. How can this be a miracle on the same level as that? That's what we're going to be examining over the next two episodes of the proof that Islam is the truth. Because that's what we're trying to bring to you. The evidences that can convince any rational, sensible person that Islam is exactly what it claims to be. The divine revelation from Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, for the benefit and the guidance of all of mankind. Now, of course, what is noticeable is that each miracle is appropriate for each time and for each place. As I mentioned, you see, the miracle that was given to Moses when his staff became a snake and how it was able to destroy the magic of the magicians was suitable to Egypt at that time because that was what they were impressed by. Similarly, in the time of Jesus, the doctors and the people who were expert in medicine were very impressed. They knew that compared to what their capabilities were at that time, there was no way that they could do those things. They knew that what Jesus had bought was something that was from God. So it was very suitable to that time, to that place. But the Qur'an is for all times. The Qur'an is until the Day of Judgment. And the miracle of the Qur'an is not just one miracle. Its aspect is miraculous in many, many different ways. And certainly, one of the miraculous aspects about the Qur'an are the statements in the Qur'an concerning the natural world concerning things that normally is the realm of scientific investigation. Yet, the Qur'an contains information that no person could possibly have known 1,400 years ago. These are the scientific miracles of the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an is guidance, the age of science, just as it was guidance for the age of the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him. But our topic today is not the scientific miracles in the Qur'an. We're going to be dealing with that in some further episodes. Today, our topic is the linguistic miracle of the Qur'an. And in some ways, this is a historical investigation. Although it is still something that is a challenge that stays until this day because the Arabic language is a living language people still speak Arabic people can still pick up the Quran who speak Arabic and read it and understand it and comprehend it even though this book is 1400 years old you would be very hard-pressed in fact I don't even know if there is another book like this in the world today or another language like this in the world today that is so ancient yet people still comprehend it and still people understand its language so this is something very special about the Quran but what we're going to be investigating is this linguistic miracle of the Quran the challenge of the Quran that was laid down to the Arabs 1400 years ago if you do not believe that this book the Quran is from God then produce one chapter like it. Just produce one chapter like it. And if you can't do it, and verily you will never be able to do it, then fear the fire, fear the hell fire, whose fuel is men and stones. So this is the challenge of the Qur'an. The challenge was for the Arabs to produce just a chapter like the Qur'an. So I want to really spend a little bit of time explaining the significance of this and in order to do that we need to travel back in time and we need to understand something about Arabia in the time of the Prophet Muhammad may God's peace and blessings be upon him and we have to understand that this was a time this was a place with no civilization that we can speak of it was a real backwater there was no real civilization there it was in fact a life in Arabia in the time of the Prophet Muhammad was barbaric. We could describe it as barbaric. A common practice was female infanticide. 
they had no roads, no impressive buildings, no amazing infrastructure, no art forms to think of and to talk about. But what they did have, of course, what was in place was the language. They were masters of their language. And if they had a civilization, their civilization was in the language itself. And we're going to talk about that in more detail after the break. Don't leave us. Stay with us for the proof that Islam is the truth, the linguistic miracle of the Quran. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And today we're talking about the linguistic miracle of the Quran. And we were talking about how the Arabs had no civilization to speak of in terms of monuments and buildings, but they were extremely proud of their language. In fact, the word Arabs use for people who are not Arab is Ajmi. And Ajmi means someone who is dumb. Someone, it's like someone who can't speak. So they were really proud of their language. It was a pure language. It was a strong language. And they were masters of it. They were masters of the use of language. And they were very, very fond of poetry as well. In fact, they had a marketplace for poems, a marketplace for poetry. It was called Uhaz. And this is the context in which I need to place the revelation of the Word of God, the Quran. Because it's in this context that the challenge of the Quran is made. You see, the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, was not a literate man. He was not a man of letters. He was not known to be a poet or a narrator. That's not what he was known to be. He was known to be honest and truthful and trustworthy. Yet he came with this book, outstanding in its qualities, a masterpiece of literature, unlike which the Arabs had never heard before. And the proof of it, the proof that it was from God to the Arabs, was its eloquence, its mastery of the language, its succinctness. So the Quran made a challenge. The first challenge was, because the people were saying, Muhammad invented the Quran. They were claiming he invented it. So 